Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will look at how we can enable SSH on Ubuntu Linux. The first thing we want to do is click on start and tap Ubuntu. So when you tap the word UB, it shows you Ubuntu 22.04.2 LTS. If you remember in our previous video, this is the version of Ubuntu that we install when we configure WSL version 2 on Windows 11. I will make sure to leave a link to that video in the YouTube card so that if you haven't seen that video, you can check it out and just go through it and be able to first install WSL on your Windows computer and also set up and configure Ubuntu Linux. So I'm just going to click on Ubuntu. Ubuntu Linux open on my second screen, so I'm just going to drag the window back here. Before we can configure SSH on Ubuntu, let's first understand what is SSH. So SSH is an acronym that stands for Secure Share. SSH is a network protocol that allows us to securely connect to and manage our computer remotely. So it allows for a secure file transfer between your host computer and the remote computer, as well as allows you to execute commands within a secure environment. The first thing to check is to check the IP address of our Linux computer. So I will type IP space ADD arrow and press enter. When I do that, there are two information I see one and two. One has low, which is the loopback, is basically referring to the computer itself. And then the second one, which is the Ethernet zero, is our local area network connection. And when we look down here, we will see that where we have adnet, this is the IP address of this computer. So the IP address is 172.19.41.90. To perform SSH, we can use so many software, but in this video, I will use PuTTY. So I'll open my web browser and type download PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y and press enter. Then I want to click on this website, party.org. So I will click on the very first one and I will click right at the top that has download party. So I will click on that to download party. When the party download page opens, I have a few options here. I can either download the .msi version of party or I can just download the executable version. So I'm just going to download the executable version of party. So I will click on this first one, which is the 64 bit one because my computer is 64 bit. So I'll click on party.exe and then it's going to show this option. I'm just going to click on advanced because I trust the software. So I'm just going to click on advanced and click on proceed. And I'm going to begin the download of party at the top here. I'm just going to wait and allow that to download. All right, so now that is completed, I will just double click on it. It's going to open party for me. So I'm just going to minimize my web browser I can come back to Ubuntu, highlight the IP address and press enter. It's going to copy the IP address and I'm going to come to party and I'm going to paste the IP address in here. After pasting in the IP address, I want to keep the connection type to SSH and the default port number for SSH is port 22. So I'm going to keep it to that and I'm going to click on open. When I click on open, I notice that it failed with a network connection error and it's because SSH has not been enabled. So I did this on purpose for us to see that by default, SSH is not enabled on the Ubuntu Linux that we install. So I'm just going to click on OK. I'm going to close that window and then we're going to go through how we can enable SSH on Ubuntu Linux so that we can be able to connect to SSH. So after closing that window, the first thing we want to do on this Ubuntu Linux I'm just going to clear my screen. After clearing my screen, the first thing I want to do is to update my local package database on my Ubuntu computer. In order to do that, since we require administrative privileges to run that command, we first want to start by typing sudo space app space update space minus y, which is yes. Put that command and I'll press enter and it will ask me for my password. So I'm going to put my password and then it will update the repository. So basically what this command is doing is updating my local database on the computer. 
So now that my database has been updated, it tells me that 102 packages has been upgraded. So the next thing I want to do now is to install OpenSSH. So I'm just going to clear my screen. So the next command is to type sudo space app install OpenSSH hyphen server minus y for yes. So this command is going to install OpenSSH server on Ubuntu Linux. So I'll just press enter and then it's going to install that. After installing OpenSSH on Ubuntu Linux, the next thing I want to do is just to clear my screen. After clearing my screen, the next thing to do is just to check the OpenSSH configuration file. So I'm going to do cat space slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config and press enter. So in this ssh configuration file, I'm just going to scroll up. There are a few things that we need to take note of in this file. So looking at the SSH configuration file, we want to enable the LAN that has port 22. That's the first thing we want to do. The next thing we want to do, we want to enable the LAN that has listening address 0.0.0.0. .0 That's the second thing we want to do. And then the third thing we will do in this file is to enable the password authentication. When we go down, we notice that password authentication is hashed out. So those are the three changes we would like to make to this SSH configuration file. So I'm just going to repeat the command by pressing the up arrow and just come to the beginning and remove the word cat from the beginning and tap the word nano. So the nano command is a text editor command. So if you don't know how to use the nano command, I'll make sure to leave a link in the YouTube card as well as leave a link in the video description down below so that you can check that out to know about how to use the nano command. So I'm just going to press enter. After pressing enter, we have entered the SSH configuration file, but when you notice here, it tells us right here in red that the file is unwritable. And the reason it's simple is because we need administrative privileges to access and make changes to the file. I'm just going to use Control plus X to exit on Windows or Command plus X to exit on Mac. So I'll just use that to exit. And then ask me to save changes. I will just tap N for no. So I will just repeat the command and then begin the command with sudo space and then press enter. And now I can make changes to the file. So I'm just going to come down to where there is port 22. I'm just going to backspace the hash from there to activate that line. And then the next thing I come to listen address, I'll backspace that to remove the hash. Then I'll go down to the authentication, the login authentication. So it's password authentication. So I'm just going to activate that line by removing the hash. And once that is done, the next thing I want to do is to exit. So I just press command plus X or control plus X. And then ask me, do you want to save? I will say yes by putting Y. And I'll just keep the file with the same name and just press enter. So I will just press the up arrow to go through the command and come to cat on the SSH configuration file and press enter to have a look at the file. So when I scroll up, as you can see that the password authentication line has been activated because I removed the hash from there. So that is good. Then we go up. The listening address line is active as well, as well as port 22 is active. So those are the three changes that we needed to make in order to activate or to enable SSH on the Linux server. So after enabling SSH, the next thing I want to do is just to clear my screen. After clearing my screen, the next thing I want to do is to restart the SSH service. To do that, I will start by typing sudo space system ctl so the system ctl command is a new command that we are learning today so this command is used to access the services on Linux. so i will just type that and press space and press restart and type restart rather and then space and what do i want to restart i want to restart the ssh service so i'm just going to put ssh press space and then another thing in Linux that we can do is we can use double amper and stand and, and sign between command. So what the double ampersand does is 
that it allows us to sequentially execute commands. So the first command will execute, and once that command is successful, then the second command will execute, and when that is successful, then the next command will execute. So depending on the number of commands that you use, it will execute then sequentially. So we want the first thing we want to do is to restart the SSH service. So this is the command to do that. Then we'll put the double ampersand and we'll press space. And then the next thing we want to do after restarting the SSH service is for us to enable the SSH service. So we're going to type sudo space and then we're going to use the systemctl command and then we'll put enable SSH then we'll press space. Then we want to use the double ampersand again. And then we'll tell sudo space systemctl space. And then after that, after that, we want to check the status of the SSH. To then make sure that after restarting it, enabling it, then we just want to make sure that the, the service is running by checking the status. So we'll put status space SSH. Now we'll press enter. So that restarted the SSH service for us and then enable the SSH service as well as check the status. So when we look at the status, we see that the status is active. So once the SSH service is active now and running, the next thing we can do is to recheck the IP address by typing IP space ADDR and press enter. And then we can copy this IP address. I liked this IP address, press enter to copy it. Then we can open party. So I'll click on start and look for party. Open party. And I'll put in the IP address. Keep it to port 22, which is the default port for SSH. Keep the connection type to SSH. And now we'll click on open. So once I click on open, it's going to give me this alert asking us that the SSH key has not been cached to this computer. So if I'm sure of everything, do I want to accept it? Or, or not. So you can say accept once. But I'm just going to click on accept to just accept it. Then now it has it brought me into the logon screen for my Ubuntu learners. So I'm just going to type in a user that exists on that Ubuntu server. And I'm just going to type in the password and press enter. As you can see, we have successfully logged into the Ubuntu server via SSH. So if I type host name, our Ubuntu server. So we can even check the IP address. Make sure the IP address 172.19.41.90 is the same 172.19.41.90. So that's how we enable SSH on Linux. So after successfully setting up SSH on our Ubuntu Linux and testing a connection from our host computer to it, and we realized that it was successful, the next thing we want to do is to just close party, or we can just minimize party, but we want to perform one last step. The reason being that currently on our network, only my local computer will be able to remotely connect to our Linux computer. So if we, if we need to make other computer on the network to remotely connect to the Linux computer, we will need to perform a last step. So in order to perform that last step, we need to open PowerShell on my computer. So I'll just open PowerShell. I'm just going to click on Start and click PowerShell and click on PowerShell. And then when PowerShell opens, I'm just going to paste in this command. I'm going to paste anyway. I will make sure to put this command in the video description so that you can copy it and just use it. So before I execute this command, I'm just going to explain what this command is going to do. So basically this command is going to perform port forwarding from our Windows computer to our Linux computer in our WSL environment. So I'm using the net sh command. So I'm listening to port 22 because if you remember on the Ubuntu Linux when we configure the SSH configuration file, we kept the port to the default SSH port, which is 22. So if for any reason we had changed that port number to any other port number, we'll make sure to, to put that number here. Since we kept it to the default 22, so I'll just keep it to the default. 
So the next line is the listen address. When we set this listen address to 0 .0 0.0.0.0, it basically means that our Ubuntu learners will listen to any IP address on our local ad network. And then again, connection port, we keep it to 22 because we kept 22 as the default port number. So connect address is the IP address of my Ubuntu computer. So if I drag it here, you see it's 172.19.41.90. So you want to make sure that that IP address is there. So, so before running, make sure that this command, you are not running it on the Ubuntu, but you are rather running it on your Windows computer in PowerShell. So once this is correct, I'm satisfied, we just press enter. So it tells me that this command needs to be run in elevator mode. So for Ubuntu, we will use sudo, but for Windows, we can use run as. So I will just open PowerShell again. And I will click on yes when the user account control screen pops up. Then now PowerShell has opened as admin. So I'm just going to right click to paste the command. I will just press enter to execute that command. So once the command is executed, my Ubuntu learners will accept SSH connection from other devices on my local network. So the next thing to do is to check the port forwarding status. So I'm just going to type net sh interface space port proxy space show or and I'll press enter. And then going to tell me that it's listening to, it will listen to any IP address, which is a 0, .0 .0 on port 22 which is the default port for SSH and on and the IP address to connect to is the IP address of my Ubuntu server on port 22. And then after checking port forwarding, the next thing I want to do is to add a firewall rule so that I can enable the port on my host computer. So I'm just going to, again, paste in the command. Then I'm going to right click and paste in the command and I'll press enter to add a firewall. So this shows me the status is okay. And once this is done, then everything is set. So any computer on my local network can perform SSH to my Ubuntu computer, as well as my local computer, as we have already tested and we saw that it works. All right, so that brings us to our end of this video. So if you like the video, kindly make sure to like it, subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel. And if you find this video helpful and you know of anyone who will benefit from it, make sure to share it. But without further ado, take care and stay practicing.